Hello and welcome to the fifth annual Alaska UAS Interest Group. Thanks to Greg and Harry and Jay for organizing the conference and inviting me to say a few words. I wish I could be there in Anchorage with you, but I'll be flying over the country while you see this DVD. I was just in town last week for a few days meeting with Alaskans and enjoying the great fall weather. The trees are an amazing sight to see in September, at least the ones that are still standing in after those windstorms. It's been a few months since I last met with you and to talk about the direction of unmanned aerial systems. We had a good discussion in May, and I want to continue to be involved in shaping the future of the industry. Since then, and working to help folks back east understand the different ways unmanned systems can work for us. I've always had to remind people that in Alaska, we only have 1.2 people per square mile. There are a lot of space out there with nobody living. With it, taking photos of marine debris on over 40,000 miles of coastland, surveying massive wildfires, or gathering data of receding Arctic ice, there are lots of places where we can use a little extra help from these machines. And that's without even mentioning the real and potential military uses for unmanned systems. When it comes to unmanned systems, my number one priority is ensuring that Alaska is the leader in research, construction, and use in the nation. There is no reason why we can't be at the cutting edge of developing and using unmanned aircraft. I always say, if you can do it in Alaska, you can do it anywhere. That's why I've supported development of unmanned air systems in Alaska in a number of ways. First, through the 2012 FAA reauthorization bill, Congress mandated that the FAA establish six UAS sites in the nation. I fought hard to locate one of those test sites in Alaska. Second, I inserted language in the FAA reauthorization to establish permanent areas in the Arctic where unmanned aerial systems can safely operate 24 hours a day for research and commercial purposes and beyond line of sight, including launching by land or sea. Third, in my address this spring to the Alaska State Legislature, I strongly encourage the state to insert $5 million for the University of Alaska for research and development of the Unmanned Aerial Systems Program. And yes, that $5 million was included in the governor's budget. While we all have slightly different interests, we need to stand united now to show the Department of Defense and the FAA we have the need and the know-how to use unmanned aerial systems in Alaska and to perfect a program that can be used elsewhere in the nation. FAA is working on the rulemaking for the Arctic and the UAV sites as we talk here today. Setting priorities, and even though they've pushed it back a little bit, they're still on track to make sure we resolve these issues and move forward. I just recently had a conversation with the FAA Administrator, Michael Huerta, just last week to repeat our message that unmanned aerial systems are a priority for Alaska and is good for science, business, research, technology development, and safety. Also expressed to the FAA, it is all of our interest that unmanned systems are fully integrated into Alaska's airspace and that the national airspace so our skies are 100% safe for our GA, commercial, military, and unmanned aircraft. I hope you have a productive meeting. I look forward to hearing from you about how I can continue to advocate on your behalf. To all of you, thank you for your commitment to this important technology. I believe unmanned vehicles are part of the new frontier and that they have a place in our airspace. Please continue to work hard and I will support your efforts in any way possible. Have a productive conference.